hi guys what's going on welcome back to another video i hope that everything is great on your end and listen even if everything is not to your liking this too shall pass nothing lasts forever so just continue praying and having faith all right so in this video i'm gonna show you how to make beef patty the main focus in this video will be showing you another way you can make your patty pastry guys i have no secret ingredients but after eating beef patties all my life i have a pretty good idea of what the taste profile is my aim here at stir taser just today is to recreate this recipe this authentic jamaican recipe and share the recipe with you so you can have it for yourself i am excited guys it's gonna be quick it's gonna be easy and I want you to stay tuned, you're gonna love this one. Zin, so I have all the ingredients ready and I'm just gonna walk you through the entire process. Guys, let's put the pastry together. I'm using two cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon salt, I'm using kosher salt, two teaspoon granulated sugar, one tablespoon turmeric, that's what's gonna give it the color, sieve it all in, add one teaspoon lemon juice to your cold water and we're dumping two cups unsalted butter and half cup vegetable shortening. Combine all the ingredients, not necessarily breaking up the butter and the shortening with the flour, but just mixing them all together. And we're gonna use that cold lemon water we made to form the dough. You can use plastic wrap. Here I'm using parchment paper. What I'm going to do is to dump the dough on the parchment paper, just like so, and I'm ensuring that I get everything out. I want to put this all together, and I'm going to form a simple little square. I'm wrapping the dough over with my parchment paper. You can do so if you're using plastic wrap, just the same. We're gonna let this rest in the refrigerator for 15 minutes before we start rolling it out. Guys, it's been 15 minutes. Now we're gonna start the first roll. I'm gonna try to roll it in this parchment. It's not gonna work. So I'm gonna roll it on the actual surface. So guys, making patty can be a lot of work, as you can see, but if you're like me where I can't get patties around the corner you're gonna put the effort in it to make it especially if you love that pastry so what I'm doing here is just to combine the butter the flour and all the ingredients that we have we want to build layers so that this pastry will become flaky the work, the time, the effort, look, I'm building muscles, will pay off. And this is it. We're gonna put it back in the cooler and let it rest for another 15 minutes or so. Let's start doing some blending. And I'm going to show you all the herbs that I'm gonna In a food processor, I'm adding Parsley, scallion, garlic, dried basil and thyme, cinnamon, salt and onions, bell peppers and hot pepper. I'm going to blend this all up. The herbs are finished grinding. This is what it looks like. Ensure that you get it as smooth as possible. You don't want anything poking through your pastry. Guys, from memory, Eating beef patties, I can recall that it is spicy, it is flavorful, but when it comes to the beef, it is so smooth. So what I want to do guys is to break down some of this textured beef that I have here into something much, much more smoother to recreate that authentic patty taste that I'm used to. To do that, I'm going to add some of the raw beef to the food processor in the same green herbs that I had and I'm going to blend it out a little bit so that it would be and it was smooth enough. To a pot on medium heat, add the remaining raw beef. And remember that blended mixture we just did? Add it as well. No oil needed. And we're gonna start cooking the filling for the patties. Guys, 
guys we're halfway through the cooking process but i want to show you something look at this you see that oil the beef has produced its own oil so when making your patties don't put any additional oil in it because your patties will become greasy so i'm gonna spruce it up with some more spice ketchup for thickener and we need some more salt and this beef is a little too white for me so i'm gonna add some grace browning This is a close-up of what it looks like. The taste is on point. Can you see all those herbs? So colorful. I think though, I could have ground up the beef a little bit more to make it much more smoother, but it's all good. We're gonna move on. After three separate folds, of course you can do more, but I'm gonna show you what this looks like in a second. Can you see all those layers? That's what we're looking for. This is what's gonna create the flaky texture of these patties. The first time I started making patties, this was my challenging stage where you put the meat and the pastry together. But after doing patties so regular, I've learned a few strategies and I want to share that with you just in case you're having the same issues. The first thing I started doing is to cut the pastry into pieces. These pieces will be the size of my patties. I would say if you have a scale, it would be eight ounces when you weigh these balls because i don't have a scale i'm estimating and just judging from each size and creating the same size across the board so that's number one always cut your pastry up into the size patties that you desire i've separated the patty meat this is the pot is what i'm gonna use for those 12 patties i just rolled up here I have one cup pepper jack cheese I just grated. I'm adding it to the beef. And guys, this is my personal take on beef patties. I've tried it before and it's extremely delicious. It will not let your patty become stringy. Instead, you will have more flavor and texture, which I think is more important than having stringy patties. Wouldn't you agree? Guys, I saw this little gadget on Amazon. It comes in three sizes. I decided I'm gonna give it a try and see if it will hold up with making these patties. You need a spoon, a fork, a container with water, and you need your rolling pin. So I'm gonna roll out the first dough and try this little gadget to see if it will work for me. Guys, I'm kind of structuring the meat to ensure that it fits in that little pocket at the back. It's a little technical, but I'm going to see what the outcome will be. Okay, this is looking good so far. Squeeze, squeeze. Ensuring that I seal it. I like the size of this. All right. Oh my God. All right. So guys, I just wanted to show you this gadget and see if it would work. But as you can see, there is hole in the dough and I'm not going to just waste all my product with this. I'm going to stick to the evil that I know <laughs> and just play with that some other time. The second technique I want to share with you is how to roll your dough. And what I do is to start off in an oblong shape, something looking like an egg, like you see right here. And then to open things up, I just switch the pastry around and start rolling in the other direction. It doesn't give me that perfect circle, but that shape that works, that when I add the filling to the pastry and seal that patty, I don't have to cut any excess dough off. I'll show you in a minute. You see that guys it seals perfect the final technique I want to share with you guys is a combo pack 
it's knowing where to put the filling on the pastry and how much you should put on that pastry never never put the filling in the middle of the pastry unless you're using that gadget i showed you earlier always put the filling closest to you this will give you more leverage when you're sealing the patty to just pull that top part over and sealing it perfect at the end guys probably you've always questioned what ratio filling do i use to the amount of pastry that i have cut out for my patty guys that has always been my question and i've figured it out <laughs> guys i'm not holding nothing back i learn you learn that's how it is at stir taste adjust and as i reminisce and think of all the patties I've eaten from whether juicy beef, tasties, or mothers in Jamaica, guys, there is always a balance between meat and pastry. Nothing is overpowering. So what I've started to do, if I'm making medium patties like I'm doing here today, I add one and a half tablespoon of the filling, whether it be shrimp or beef. And if I'm making large patties, which is double those two balls that I made earlier, I would put three tablespoon of the filling in it and that's just the ratio i go by and it has always worked the balance between meat and pastry is perfect nothing is overpowering and the patty eating experience has always brought me back to jam town <laughs> so guys those are the three um, techniques that i've been using for a while and they work so you can try them you can try them no problem go ahead you're welcome started out with the intention of making 12 but i lost two that is good it happened so i'm gonna show you one last time so i can reinforce what we just spoke about all right first i roll the dough out oblong shape and open it up on the other side i'm putting the filling closest to me because it will give me more leverage when sealing the patty i am making medium patties so i'm using one and a half tablespoon of that filling which is a perfect ratio to meat and pastry. Next, I'm just gonna seal it off and I don't have to cut any of the edges off. Ooh, we did it. <laughs> Poke some holes in your patty so the hair will escape while it's baking and make some egg wash to just shine these patties up. I'm adding water to one egg, mix it all up and that's an egg wash. Rub it all over your patties. The oven is preheating at 360. And once mm -hmm. it's ready, I'm gonna pop these in the oven and bake them for 25 minutes. Guys, the patty is ready. Can you see them? <laughs> it's been a few hours, but it's finally here. And I wanna show you what they look. You can see it has its crust going on there and i'm just gonna bite into one of them right now this is how you eat the patty you blow on it at the same time you're chewing on it so <laughs> guys somebody call the ambulance guys, look at that this. good look at that it tastes real good too i swear Mmm, mmm. I see that? 